During this year's Viking Engine Workshop, Zenith's Sebastian Hines showed up to give a little update on the popular kits to manufacture and what's on the horizon. Coming up right now. One of the reasons I come out here, I kind of feel like it's a Zenith event because there's so many familiar faces out here. And uh, those of you that know Zenith, you know, we, for us, it's about the people, the, the, the product that's, that's definitely an important part of it, but it's about, about the people, the building and flying airplane, the enjoyment of doing that, and then just sharing the information of, uh, you know, how to do this and how to do that. And even here I see, you know, Phil is going to be doing a seminar on, on doing vinyl wrap on the air, on his airplane and things like that. So obviously that's just, just like building a Zenith. It's, it's a departure from the engine side specifically because, uh, uh, you know, it really takes, it's a cliche, but it takes a village to build an airplane. You know, you're by yourself, but it, and, and for us as Zenith, we, we manufacture, we design and manufacture the airframe side, but you're going to need an engine for that airplane. You're going to need to finish that airplane, whether it's vinyl wrap or paint on the outside, you're going to need avionics and, and everything else. So by, you know, and by working together, that's where we really, we really help each other. And um, so, you know, it's the same thing with, you know, our, the Zenith relationship with Viking. We don't have any formal relationship whatsoever, but at the same time, I really feel like we're partners in this, that we're working together because our goal is the same as Viking's goal, uh, engine's goal, is, is we, want your, we want our customers to be able to fly and enjoy their airplanes and uh, by, by working together because we know you need an engine uh, to do that. Uh, so, you know, it's really by, by working together. And I think, uh, you know, as I become older in, in the business, it's not just about money. It's not just about the, the, the numbers for running the business. It's the relationships that we build. And so, so for us, uh, you know, it makes it enjoyable. And that's why I keep coming back out here because I, I, I enjoy out here. And of course, in Missouri in winter, it gets a little bit colder. It's a little nicer in Florida. So that's, that's another reason I like to come out here as well. Just, just like next month, I'll be returning to, uh, to Bernie, Texas, Southern Texas. Uh, we're hosting a, one of our hands-on workshops out there. And, and again, we, we do it for a bit selfish reasons that, that we enjoy, enjoy that warmer weather. So to do that, uh, you know, at, at Zenith Aircraft, you know, we've been manufacturing kits for many, many years. You know, my dad, Chris Hines, started doing that. I, I, I literally grew up in, in the business. And, um, and, and to the point where I, you know, it's all my best friends, all my, my, my friends and family, like, I mean, we are, it is part of the business. And, and for, for us, that's, that, that again, is, is what we continue to do. Um, that said, uh, you know, we, we continue to grow the business, to evolve uh, with it. Uh, on the factory side, we've really grown the business using technology, CNC manufacturing. We use high-speed routers, no laser cut parts, by the way, <laughs> but uh, uh, high-speed routers, uh, you know, to, to, to manufacture all the parts, uh, final hole size match drilled parts. Last year, um, like, uh, like Alyssa mentioned, uh, you know, her and, her and her son are, are starting to build a 701, and the new 701 is we've taken our, our existing Stoll CH701 kit and just made it easier to build using the, the latest and the technology of that. And last year, we had kind of demonstrated, I think Bill, Bill Fahey kind of, kind of put the rudder together with Clecos as, as we were talking, and it just, everything literally just comes together. It really has made it a lot easier uh, those of you that, that built a Zenith, and I see a lot of familiar faces here that, that, built, that built Zeniths in the past, um, you, know, you know the work that, that, that you've had to do, and, and we just continue to make it easier and easier uh, uh, to do that. And I think we, we kind of need that in today's society. Uh, I, I find you know, we're always trying to attract younger people, and, I, and you know, this group is, I think, pretty representative of, of, the, of the Zenith Builder Group. Uh, you know, we're a bunch of old people, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> And, uh, and, and when I say that, uh, you know, but it's, it's true where we have a hard time attracting young people. And, um, and part of it is, is the, the amount of work that goes into building airplanes. You know, you need, you need the time commitment, um, you need the space to do it, and then you need the, 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 the well, permission, well, <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> And, and the, which is my next point, the funds to do it as well. You, you need all of that. And, uh, and, and I'm a, I hate to say it, I'm a bit disappointed. We see uh, there's not many women here in the group out here, spouses, uh, whether they're, they're spouses to help the, the actual building part or just to get the, the permission. And uh, it, uh, because we know that uh, that is an important part of it. But, uh, you know, um, at Zenith, one of the things I've, I've learned a long time ago, 
the, the, the physical product, again, is just part of the, of the, of, of the product of what we sell. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the education, the learning process, and that's where uh, we really need to, to, to focus, again, getting the younger people involved with that. As we know, younger, younger folks are not getting the hands-on experience in everyday life that we used to. Nowadays, we're all on our on our phones or tablets, and they're still learning something, but it's a different type of skill. And so um, with, by adapting our kids, by making them easier and quicker to build, I think we can, we can really uh, uh, grow the market for, for our airplanes that way. And so I'm, I'm still very optimistic in many ways that we can, we can you know, aviation, I think, still has a, recreational aviation has a, has a bright future. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, you know, part of that is, is the engine technology, the, the engines that we're using. Uh, you look at like Coming and Continentals, uh, I mean, they are dinosaurs when it comes to uh, aviation technology. They do, I think they do a good job of, of what, what they do, but it's, it's still, it's older technology. And uh, by adapting things like Honda and other uh, modern uh, automotive engines, uh, uh, we can take something that, that was, that's a little bit different, but definitely a little bit more modern and, and mass produced to get the, get the cost down so that you guys can really benefit from that. And so, and that's one of the reasons, you know, I really like to see, I like to see Jan and Alyssa succeed at what they're doing because I think they're really taking, taking, the, you know, this aligned with the, the same dream that we have is to making aviation more affordable, more accessible to, to more people. And I think they do, they do a great job of, uh, of doing that. All right, I'm going to pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. Wide Open Door Company at WideOpenDoorCo.com, your premier destination for high quality doors, including aircraft hangar doors. Warp Drive Propellers at WarpDriveInc.com, providing quality, solid carbon fiber propellers for many light sport and experimental aircraft. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com, an independent master repair center and a training facility for Rotax engines. Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no, specializing in fuel injection conversions, performance upgrades, and complete engines for your aircraft. Pioneer Control Grips at PioneerControlGrips.com. Comfort, convenience, and style. Handcrafted custom wooden grips with many styles to choose from. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys want to join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel. Just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel sign up at several different levels and at certain levels we even have scheduled video meetings once a month so check that out at xena specifically we're currently uh finishing up on an expansion uh, at the factory and you know, our business has been doing really quite well and uh, those of you i know many of you have, have been to our factory i know phil was there what friday was it when, or no wednesday that's right yeah it was wednesday uh at the factory with his airplane and then and then he flew it all the way down here and uh it, um, but we're kind of busting at the seams there, so it's, uh, it, it's good for us to be able to expand and it's kind of long overdue, but uh, we're, we're, we're doing that. Uh, we continue to do workshops once a month at the factory, and, uh, and I know many of you have been to the factory doing a workshop. Some of you have been there. How many times have you been to the, the factory for the workshop, uh, Pat, a couple times? Yeah, that's right, you did the two of the rudder workshops, uh, 17 years apart. Yeah, it was really neat to see that. and, and uh, you know, we call you guys, what is it, serial offenders or something? <laughs> Building second airplanes, but I love that. And, I, and again, it's, I think a lot of that is because of the community that, that we have uh, and, and that we can uh, build and, and continue to do, uh, to do that. Um, like I mentioned on, on our kits, we, we, we continuously strive, uh, you know, rather than come out with new designs all the time, that's not something that we really focus on. It's more doing what we do, but doing it better. And, uh, you know, my dad, he was, uh, you know, engineer, he loved to design new airplanes. And, and as a second generation, we don't have that same vision that he did to just create new airplanes, but it's more to take the excellent designs that he started and making those more available 
uh, to people, and that's by making having kits that are easier to build, uh, you know, drawings and manuals that are easier to follow, and and so forth. Really, to make it as as accessible as possible. And uh, you know, with the FA Mosaic program, where they're really looking at expanding uh, light sport and sport pilot, I think that really plays well for us because as long as you know, with the, to to make flying easier and more accessible to people, I'm I'm, I'm I'm going to support it, which is why there's a lot of little nitpicky things about Mosaic, you know, the actual stall speed and so forth, that we can, you know, pros and cons about it. But uh, at, the, at the same time, uh, we, I think we can be grateful that the FA overall has really uh, taken the vision to make flying more accessible uh, you know, for, for, for people. And, uh, and I think that's a great thing. And that's why we really support it. And we're going to continue to, to move in that direction. And the same thing for you guys. If, if you, if you want to see things from, coming from Xena from a development standpoint, let us know because uh, at the end of the day, I've learned a long time ago that what I like, what I like to do or, or fly is not necessarily what, what, what you all like to do. And, and so tell us what, what you'd like to see, where we should be developing, what areas you want more, you, know, you want a back seat, let me know. If you want tail draggers, let me know so that we can really focus on, on building airplanes uh, that, that people want. And I know, I know Jan does the same thing as he, you know, sees a, sees, you know, what's available in technology. It's really to develop engines and, 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 and options for people that that's what they want rather than what he likes to do. Because, uh, you know, we, we really want to take the business and, and be able to serve as many customers as we can with it. So, um, otherwise, what else should I be talking about, uh, in terms of update? Right, right there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they, they probably do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anybody have any specific questions for Sebastian before we kind of? Oh, sure. Did you bring those job applications? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I didn't, but uh, we are hiring at Zenith. Uh, it's more fabrication type uh, positions, which is why, you know, I've always, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I, I love my customers and I've, I, I have deep relationships with them, but. They're not usually they're they're overqualified to be my my production employees because uh, you know at the end of the day you know running a factory we want it, to it's not the most or the production jobs in a factory are not the most exciting jobs because it really is production and uh, and I love 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 my. Uh, my, my production crew at Zenith, and we've got a really low turnover rate, and, and we really are a family, but it's, most of you guys are way overqualified. In other words, I'm not gonna pay you what, <laughs> what you're making now <laughs> uh, to do that. But, um, but, but uh, yeah, if some of you, you know, are looking for a complete career change or something like that, and, and would love to live in Mexico, Missouri, and that's Missouri, not Mexico, Mexico. And uh, uh, you know, let, look us up and uh, love to talk to you about anything like that. Yes, sir. What about the 801 kit? Yeah. So you know, the 801 is uh, basically our four-seat version of the of the Stoll CH701, and we developed that in the 90s. And that was kind of kind of be, well before light sport aircraft, and also before uh, 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 you know CNC. Uh, high-speed routers and, and so forth. So it's kind of an older style kit. We love the design. The design's a great design. It's a very proven short takeoff and landing airplane. Very good utility uh, applications for that. Um, we kind of dropped the 801 at Zenith in, in, in the 2000, you know, 2000, last 20 years, uh, focusing on the light sport aircraft uh, uh, category airplanes. Now with Mosaic and, you know, and well, even basic med and Mosaic, a lot of folks are are looking at flying larger airplanes uh, for that. And then, um, so absolutely, we, we, you know, it's something that we're probably gonna be reintroducing. Uh, actually, I was, uh, we discussed that yesterday. I was on a phone meeting uh, with some of our production people and, and so forth with the 801, looking at, you know, what would it take to, to really update the kit for, for today's standards? Because if I can, I can deliver kits right now for the 801, but you guys would be complaining there's a lot more drilling to do and, and things like that. That, uh, and the drawings and the manuals are a little bit old school from that uh, element. And that's where at, at Zenith, I'm excited about the future because we have such excellent designs out there. There's the 801's a fantastic airplane. Uh, our 640, it's not a very well-known design, but it's a low-wing four-seat airplane. 
a bit the same thing. It's a great low wing cross country machine and a good hauler. And uh, so things like that, we, we have the excellent design out there. They're proven designs, we've tested them. There's quite a few airplanes flying uh, like that. It's just taking the, the, the manufacturing technology and making it uh, you know, final hole size using the computer technology that is available to us now and, uh, to, and, and leveraging that. So, so absolutely. Uh, and there I encourage you to you know, keep asking those questions for us because like I mentioned earlier, we wanna build with, we want to develop and build what you guys want to want to buy and, and ultimately uh, finish and fly. So when you put your, your extension on your building uh, add-ons, is that part of the project? Absolutely. That's absolutely. Now, it's it gives us more space to to work on new projects because right now and that's that's one of the, the the you know the last 4 or 5 years I I I have a hard time working on new projects because we just physically don't have the, the space to do it properly. So we have to actually make space for a project and work on it for a couple of weeks and then, then uh, allocate that space back to whether it's shipping or receiving, things like that. And one thing we've always done at Zenith is really focusing on our existing customers, which is why you, you, you don't see me trying to sell you a future design. You see me selling what I, I can currently uh, supply to you guys. And I think that's important. And one of the reasons, you know, we were around after doing this for, you know, 30 plus years is because uh, we focus on our, on our existing customers and, and grow that business. Uh, the downside, of course, is that my new project developments, they kind of take a back seat to my, to my current customers. But I think as, as customers, you, you are, you know, the beneficiaries of that. So I think that's important as well. You had a question, yeah. Regards to Mosaic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that, that's a good question. You know, re-registering an airplane, usually once it's something is registered, it, 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 it's, it, it's a pain to re -reg you know, because you do it, essentially you have to deregister to, to re-register, and that's a... But given that Mosaic is, again, a one-off in itself, has anybody thought about that part? Well, you know, and I, I know the FAA is, is scratching its head to find a, to find a graceful way of allowing that because it, it makes sense. You know, you take, for example, the, the 7, 750 Stoll as well as a cruiser airplane, you know, we have a design gross weight of 1,440 pounds, even though it, with under light sport, you have to operate at 1,320. So you've got 120 pounds there that is unusable, if you will. And with Mosaic, all of a sudden, it becomes usable. So it's a, which is a, a, a nice thing to have. And, you know, design-wise, I don't have to change a thing on these airplanes because we've tested it. We've, we, you know, you have an airplane that has more capability than the, than the current rules will allow. So, um, like I say, we're working with the FAA on that and EA. EA is always a good partner to, to, to work on these projects like that because EA is a membership organization. Like, I mean, they represent you guys. So, so they want to really do, they want to advocate for things that benefit EA members, which are, which are the builders and pilots of, of these airplanes. So um, we're, working, we're working on that to see, to see exactly what, what will be the, I guess, like I say, the, the kind of the graceful way of, of doing that. Because you don't want to have to deregister an airplane to re-register. Like, I mean, that just gets awkward and messy. And then your logs become weird and, and, and things like that. So I, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for you, unfortunately. And, uh, but I think, I think there will be... I think a, a workable solution that will be that will come out uh, come out of that. Of course, you know, and it, and that's part of the whole you know rulemaking process. Unfortunately, we it's hard to put deadlines on things like that. You know, now that the that you know the NPRM is is still out there, and I guess it's closed now for comment period. And and there's hope that Oshkosh, you know, this summer that they'll actually announce a final rule. I uh, and I again I don't know specifics like that. I know I'm not going to try to predict what the government will be doing because that's a, that's a, yeah, so. Any thoughts on the uh, Super Duty Cruiser? Uh, I get that question a lot. So yeah, definitely thoughts about it. Um, and it, it goes back to, you know, we, we want to build what you guys want to, what, what you guys want to buy and fly. So if, if that's what you guys want, keep, keep asking those questions because, uh, No, no, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. You were basically right. Yeah. 
And 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 I I hear that, and, and it doesn't it doesn't surprise me the number of people that that want that. So and, and and again, I thank you for you know for your interest and in, in, and for your feedback because that is that is what drives our future development. Absolutely. And uh, you know it, it's always interesting trying to predict markets because markets go in all all kinds of di different directions. Uh, you know, you take, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, all the interest was in low wing cruiser type airplanes and it, now everything's in high wing airplanes. And, uh, and, it, and it's not that one is better than the other. They're, they're both great airplanes to fly, but it's just that, you know, things go in one direction and change into other directions. And that's why one thing I want to always stay a bit ahead of the curve in the sense that, you know, the development time it takes to, to, to do something new, you want to, you want to sort of see in the future what, where, where the direction is. You don't want to be reactive where you're, you know, jumping in, building a, you know, nobody wants to build a minivan, for example, right now, because they couldn't sell them. But you look 20 years ago, everybody was developing new minivans. It's the same, it's the same thing with the high wing, low wing and different configurations like that. And I think, you know, with COVID and, and other things, like that, uh, I think a lot of pilots kind of opened their eyes and, and, and discovered that, you know, a lot of the backyard flying was something that they wanted to get into. And then you, you couple that with all the YouTube videos, actually seeing people land really short and all the, the neat things they do with their airplanes, it's really opened it up for, for uh, backcountry flying. And it's nice, uh, nice to see that. Um, well, the 650 as is, I think, is a good design. Uh, like, like my other kits, it, it's something that we continually work on, and most of it is behind the scenes, making it a little bit easier to build. We're doing more and more final hole size match drilled, and about half the kit right now of the 650 that we're delivering is final hole size match drilled. Um, I don't talk much about it because it's, 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 it's only half of it. It's, you, know, you, you, can't, you can't say you don't need to do any drilling and measuring because you still do need to do some drilling and measuring, but it really is a good quality kit. And it, well, with the, with the B, if you look at the design, and it's really evolved quite a bit over the years. And, and actually this year, I should mention that, uh, this year, this is the 40th anniversary of the, of the CH6 series airplanes. Uh, you know, my dad designed the CH600 back in 1984. And it was interesting because back in 1984, they were just starting to talk about uh, light, you know, well, they were calling it primary category, but already in the 80s, they saw that certified aircraft, they were too expensive to come, you know, they were, they were already outdated in the 80s. So imagine what they are today, right? <laughs> but, um, and they were looking for, for new ways of building lighter airplanes. And, and my dad developed the 600 in response to that. And, and also interestingly too, the, the, the real Achilles heel on that airplane at the time was, was lack of a good engine for it. Um, you know, O200 was there, but it was heavy and it's kind of an old school engine. And then they had Volkswagen conversions at the time and not much else, you know, Rotax didn't exist. Uh, of course, the, all, the, all the, the Viking type uh, installations didn't exist. So they had these Volkswagen conversions, which were okay in terms of power to weight ratio, but they weren't very reliable and you know, they were air cooled and, and they just weren't, weren't the, the best engine. And it was really when the Rotax 912 at the time came out that, that all of a sudden you had a you know, relatively powerful lightweight engine. And with the, geared in, with the gear reduction, you could get better power out of a lighter, uh, a lighter airplane. And that kind of breathed new life into it. And, um, and so anyway, so now we're basically 40 years into the, the six, 650 uh, uh, design. You know, yeah, so you had the CH600, then the, then the uh, 601, and then we had an HD version and a, and a HDS version, a heavy duty and HDS was just speed wing. So we had a faster version and a larger version. And then when light sport category came along, the light sport, uh, and that was early 2000, we came out with the XL model, CH601 XL. And with that, we, we redesigned the wing to make it go a little bit faster. And um, what else did we do? The different canopy system on it, kind of up, updated. Gear. Pardon me? Landing gear. Yeah, the landing gear, we went to a spring gear over a, a simple, simple gear. And then interestingly, you know, in uh, those of you will remember in uh, kind of the uh, 2008, 2007, there were a bunch of accidents with XLs. And, um, and, and the reason, and we're still, there's no true consensus on that, but there are a bunch of accidents with the XL, which really forced us to say, you know, what the heck is going on? And it wasn't just us, it was FAA, NTSB was saying, what the heck is going on? Because there was just a, a cluster of accidents with these airplanes. And, um, and, 
and to this day, we don't really have a good consensus on why that was, but the, the, the one thing that was new and different, because the XL had, had already been around for a while when these accidents started happening, it was with the light sport category. It was like these pilots. It was mo mainly that you're getting pilots that just were not trained into, in, in, in flying light, light sport aircraft. You know, when sport pilot category came along, you had a lot of people that were used to be flying, say, Bonanza pilots, you know, much bigger, faster airplanes. And the consensus at the time was these are lighter, slower airplanes, therefore they're, they're easier airplanes to fly. You don't need transition training um, because it's, it's slower and lighter. And of course, you know, anybody that, you know, that knows, been around airplanes a while, you know you need, you need to transition train nearly any type, anything that's different, you need to, you need to, to learn about that because it is different. And um, so, uh, so, so yeah, yeah. So, so like I said, there there were a number of accidents, and that's when we came out with the B model. And our response to that was saying, okay, we're gonna to to, re, to bring back confidence in the design is we're gonna beef it up a bunch. And you know we and, and you know we had looked at the design. The NTSB had looked at the design. There's inherently nothing wrong with the design. It was it was. I don't want to say marginal it was in the sense like, I mean, yeah, if you, if you overstressed it, yeah, you could have problems with it, but that's any design. It's so, it's so uh, like I said, what we did, we, 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 we beefed it up a bunch. And uh, so uh, with the B model that, that, uh, that, that added additional strength and rigidity to the airplane. And then the other thing too was, that was and it's kind of a side note is that uh, again, just because you design an airplane well, doesn't mean that it will be constructed well. You know, and that's kind of the responsibility goes to the builder a little bit that you got to make sure that you did that you build the airplane the way it was designed uh, to do. You know, and we call for so many rivets, put so many rivets in there. Don't decide to change the, the rivets, change the fasteners, and and then improperly maintain the airplane. And because there were some of those accidents were were clearly due to poor maintenance and poor operation of the airplane. But uh, that's kind of a kind of a side note, but uh, still an important uh, configuration. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know, and I, I, I hate to, to benefit from that, but, you know, since the problems at, at Vans, uh, you know, we've had quite a, quite a bit of a extra interest in, in the 650 and, and so forth. But, Yeah, yeah, and uh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, absolutely. And you hate to benefit on from someone's misery or someone's problems, but at the same time, it sometimes it, it takes a disruption in an industry for people to reevaluate to actually look at that because. You know, sometimes, and I think sometimes the Vans customers are a little bit uh, guilty of that. They just kind of follow and they, they don't even consider other stuff. And then when, when, when things like that happen, then they're looking at, at other things. And then, and then just based on the actual merits of the product, then they say, oh, maybe doing an automotive conversion is, is a smarter way to go about it. So, but at the same time, it just opens your eyes to, to new possibilities. And that's what I've always loved about the experimental aircraft category is like, I mean, we are experimental. So like, I mean, it, it's okay. It's actually good to, to try out new technology, to, to, to look at different things like that. And, um, and those of you that know Zenith, we know, like, like, like I mentioned even earlier, uh, about our relationship with Viking is that we don't have a relationship as you guys are the ones that are developing that in the sense that you are looking at what's available for, you know to power the airplanes and then choosing yourselves what is going to be the best match for your for your airplane and uh and i and i like to see it grow organically that way that it's 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 you the customer that is deciding the direction you want to go with it with it and uh and then sometimes you know you look back sometimes you could you know the the, you know, the problem with choices is sometimes we can make the wrong choices but at the same time having that choice i still think is 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 a better than not having a choice uh in doing it and and i think things like you know workshops like this where you 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 become an informed consumer an informed customer pilot and you so that you can learn as much as you can so that you can really make that right choice and which is why it doesn't surprise me that year after year you see viking is becoming more and more popular because it's it's actually working it's a, and uh, even though you'll get some old timer like homing or continental pilots saying oh those engines don't work and da 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 but you talk to actually people that are flying them and so forth it is working
thing, and that's where that's where it, uh, it it's really the best validation uh, for that. So, can you speak a little bit more to the the benefit of the to match whole final final size thing? Because as you know, my kit the right. one everything had to be yeah. measured and drilled and lined up with a sharpie mark, and yeah, so. The, I mean, there's probably somebody here that doesn't know what that is. Right, right. Well, <laughs> you're right, yeah. Well, and, and, it's, and it, it, it's, it's a good point you bring up because once we start doing it, you can't take it away. Yeah. Because, no, it's true, though, because people truly, I mean, for them, it becomes the, the baseline. And it's and it's so much easier. And you know, that said, you know, I, I, like I said, I you know, I grew up around around kid airplanes. You know, we a wing skin used to be a flat piece of aluminum, and that was it. You had to you had to uh, you had to cut it. You had to drill. You had to so you had to you had to trim the edges. You had to measure and then drill every single hole. Usually, you would drink, uh, drill a pilot hole and then drill it up to the full size. Now all of that is gone. You know, you just take the parts, line them up, click them together. It's it's as uh, it's as simple as that. So it really it really becomes a, a lot easier and a, and a lot simpler. And you know, like I mentioned earlier, I was saying you know how you know the, the builder takes on responsibility because they have to follow the instructions correctly. It's a lot easier to follow instructions when everything is can only line up one way. Can, uh, can only be done. Um, th again, this is a firewall off the 701, and it's for years we've it, we've supplied it as a preform part, and it's galvanized steel because it is a firewall. The rest of the airplane is aluminum, but um, but uh, now this is a firewall, and if you look at it, look at all these holes on there. You know, it's like Swiss cheese. It's a lot of holes, and all of them are final hole size. All the brackets, all the pieces line up. You can literally build your firewall assembly you know there's there's a shelf that goes here for the for the spring gear there's a lingeron stiffeners there's a lot of a lot of pieces but everything just click goes on and you know the click goes are just the temporary fasteners and you're literally two hours you've got your firewall is built before it was like <laughs> and uh because yeah you probably spent i don't know how many days uh doing the the firewall assembly and then the firewall assembly, there's two sides to it. You got the, intern, the, the front and the back sides uh, to it. But it's so, right, you can look at it and say it's not fair, but it really is a game changer. You know, I grew up, like I, like I mentioned, it's, uh, you know, I grew up in the business, you know, and I remember back in the 80s and 90s, metal airplanes, they were kind of the spam cans. It was the old way of doing stuff. If you remember back in the 80s and 90s, that's when all the composite airplanes were coming out and so forth. And, uh, and, and I remember telling me, tell, folks telling me and telling my dad that, you know, if you guys don't switch to composites, you guys will be out of business uh, because that's, that's the way of the world. It's going, going that route. Now, if you fast forward 40 years out today, you look at all the modern kit airplanes, it's all metal stuff. And a lot of that has to do with the, with the final hole size because it just makes it a lot easier. And I, and I think metal construction for the for the foreseeable future anyway, is gonna to continue to dominate. And I think a big part of that is also the, the ability to inspect, to, to look at everything. Uh, you know, you can look at every, every rivet and, and you know, you had an incident just not that long ago where you wanted to go back and inspect stuff, right? Yeah. And with metal, you can. If you have stuff glued together, it's just harder to do. And uh, you know, it's with today's technology, you can look at, look at everything. And uh, so it just, it lends itself well for that. As a home built project, it's also really nice because you don't have to worry about dust-free environment. You're not working with chemicals. You're you're not working with, with temperature controlled. You know, if you're trying to glue stuff together, you have to worry about the temperature at which you're 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 curing the glue, things like that. And so, it really, the the metal construction as a home-built uh, kit aircraft uh, project works really well. So. You know, that's a good question. Um, I'd say it's probably close to 50%. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's big and, and it's, it's, it's difficult to, to, to truly quantify because it's a type of work is very different. When you're, when you're starting with everything, everything's been measured and pre-cut, a lot of the, a lot of the, 
the hard work, if you will, is taken out. Because you're the 50% the, the that is left, you're just clicking and riveting. So it, it really becomes a lot easier. And as a manufacturer, I love the, the, our, our new kits because the airplanes coming out are all the same. Because everything's been pre-drilled, so they're going to come out the same. I remember you know, looking at customer airplanes, sometimes you'll get a rivet line that's kind of going all over the place. And you're hoping, well, as long as you're within tolerance, you're okay. But you, if you can't see the bottom side, you're hoping that kind of it is. Uh, now when everything is pre-cut or pre-drilled, everything is going to come out. And you can only, you can only put it together correctly because uh, the, the, the rib below it has already been pre-drilled. So you know that that hole is going to be in that center of the rib. It's not going to be way off on one side. So it gives me that reassurance that our airplanes are going to be built a lot more, a lot more uniform. Let me go ahead and um, finish up any questions yeah. that anybody might have. And if, if, it, if it gets too far, obviously Sebastian is around. It, it, feel free to ask him some questions. We are going to move on a little bit. So if anybody has any final questions, we can kind of wrap up with him. Hink. Uh, we're down to back to normal times, three months. And, uh, you know, with COVID, it was kind of a, it was kind of crazy because everybody was ordering stuff and, and we had lips, everybody had limited manufacturing capability and so forth, supply side issues. And so they were, it was gone kind of out, but now we're back to the normal, normal world. And that's the same with our expansion. We'll have the ability to, to, to get them out the door a little bit quicker. So, cool. yep. Yeah. Final question. Um, it's, well, it's, it's nearly there. I, I'm not going to give you a date because it's, it's, it's a project. It's an ongoing project. And, and like I say, our, the 650 kit right now that we're delivering is a good quality kit. And so I don't, I don't feel bad at all delivering the, the ones that we are delivering right now. Um, but it is something that we, we are working on. I, if I had a guess at a number and I just said I wasn't going to give you a date, but I'd say a year out or so. And, uh, but, but again, the kit is, is, is high quality right now. It really is. And, and, and more so even than when, when you, when did you start yours? That was quite a while ago now, isn't it? 2005. 2005. So it's, it's already, it's, it's already a lot, a lot more evolved than it was in 2005. And, uh, like, like Alyssa said, I'll be around to answer, answer more questions. And, and thanks again, guys. I love um, seeing so many familiar faces out here and, uh, hope to see new faces as well. So thanks, uh, thanks for hosting us.